Sure, absolutely. So I mentioned this idea that we need two playbooks, beat the status quo, overcome indecision. Overcoming yeah. indecision is about uh, dialing down the fear of purchasing. Um, how do we do it? So a JOLT is an acronym. It's actually four behaviors we distilled in the research that high performers use to get their customers from I want this to I bought this, from like intent to action, to get them to actually sign on the dotted line and get them from, you know, yeah, you beat the status quo, but you never got to a closed deal. Um, that land of indecision. Um, so what do they do? So they do four things. Uh, JOLT, again, it's an acronym. The J is they judge the level of indecision. This is all about um, trying to find something that customers don't talk about openly. Like every cus no customer ever got a t-shirt printed up that says, I can't make decisions, right? They all think they're decisive. Yet the data shows very clearly that 87% of opportunities contain are with customers who have either moderate or high levels of indecision. So it's a little bit like carbon monoxide. Like you can't smell it, you can't taste it, you know it's out there and it's bad for you, but how do you find it? So you need a carbon monoxide detector. And we talk about using a, a combination of active listening and then also uh, this technique we call kind of pings and echoes. How do I articulate for my customer the fears, the, the sources of indecision I think they're struggling with and see if they'll verify that. Or if not, correct me, right? And so we get these fears on the table so we can talk about them and manage them. For a salesperson, that is invaluable because what it tells you is, um, how do I forecast this deal? Um, should I disqualify this deal? Is this a garbage truck that I shouldn't be spending time chasing? Um, how do I actually, uh, what's my game plan to get the customer to make a decision, right? What's the depth of their indecision? Where is this coming from? Is this person personally indecisive? So that's the J judging the level of indecision, the O, offering a recommendation. So, the, you know, look, it's great to put lots of options in front of your customer, but we know from Barry Schwartz's work in the paradox of choice, endless choice cuts both ways. It feels good early on, but it becomes a bad thing later on when we have to actually pick something. We have to decide what do we take out of our shopping cart? What are we not going to buy? Because when we do that, we're closing off doors and that doesn't feel great. And so what we found in the research is best salespeople will narrow up the consideration set and offer, guide the customer to a set of choices, all of which are good, and then put their personal seal approval on one of them to instill the, again, the, the sense of self-efficacy the customer has that I can do this. This is all, these are all great options. And this person's telling me this is the one I should pick. It's like going to a restaurant, you know, go think about like going to the Cheesecake Factory and all those endless options on the menu and having that waiter is like, you know, it, there's a big difference between somebody who says, Nick, you say, what should I order? What's good here? And they say, what are you in the mood for? Like, not very helpful. But for that waiter who says, this is my favorite, but if you're in the mood for something lighter or you're uh, like a seafood fan, I really like this dish as well. Yeah. Narrowing up the consideration set. Now I feel like this is awesome. I can forget everything else and I can pick something. L is limiting the exploration. We talked about that before, but fighting the customer's urge to do endless, endless amounts of research and become an expert themselves, which they will never be. Um, how do we do it? How do we become that trusted advisor, get them to stop spinning their wheels with endless research? The T taking risk off the table. Remember we talked about that outcome uncertainty. I might not get what I'm paying for. What are the things we can do, both formal and informal, to give that customer the sense that we got their back? You know, they're not jumping off a cliff without a safety net. We've got their back. They're not going to look like a fool. They're going to look like a hero. Here are the confidence givers we can provide that help the customer kind of settle down and realize this thing is not going to go sideways. You're not going to be called to answer for a really bad decision. You're going to look great. And here's how we're going to make that happen. So these things, the Jolt playbook, we like it because it's memorable, but it also speaks to what's happening here, right? Your customer's stuck in their indecision. We're trying to jolt them into action. So it's it says what it does, if you will.